Good afternoon, everyone, and um, welcome to our webinar um, with Marcus Williams. I'm just going to wait for a few seconds to let everyone um, log on. So if we can all just bear with us, we will uh, get there. It just takes a couple of seconds. So our numbers are increasing gradually. So I think I'll start um, and introduce you today to Marcus. I'm delighted that Marcus is with us. Um, his firm is called The Atlantic Link, and he has 25 years experience in um, getting Irish craft and design product uh, successfully into the United States. He's going to give us an interactive uh, piece this afternoon. So we'll all just bear with it and hope for stability on our uh, connections. So today's topic is researching potential buyers for the US market. And with that, thank you very much for joining us today, Marcus. And everyone, if you have a question, please put it into the, type it into the Q&A and we'll deal with all of them at the end. Thank you. Thanks very much, Emer. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Happy Friday. Um, I hope uh, you're all safe and well. Um, I uh, was asked by the Design Council a couple of weeks ago uh, just to give you a talk on researching potential buyers for the US market. Uh, uh, so I'm going to run you through, as Emer mentioned, uh, I have been a Johnny salesman for the last 25 years, going back and forth to the States and um, uh, it's, 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 been, it's been very enjoyable um, and I'm just going to walk you through um, that process. I suppose in current times it's of a big advantage that we are um, uh, stuck at home um, to, to some degree and it gives us time to be able to do that research um, uh, before markets open up again, which I hope will be sooner rather than later. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm going to run you through uh, the presentation. Um, to give you an overview, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's quite a process from the production of a piece in Ireland um, to the US consumer making a purchase. Um, I've named that the circle of wholesale and I may have met some of you at Showcase Ireland. Um, I've done a presentation over the last two years um, highlighting that circle of wholesale. And I suppose what I want to do today is, is you know, zone in on step one of that, which is the research. Um, look, it's like everything, you know, the reward will come uh, uh, if you do that initial work. Um, you need to quantify one's goals and the commitments you have. Um, you know, there's no, there's no point in doing it or thinking, oh, I'm going to do it and, 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 and not put your heart and soul. I mean, you know, you need a kind of a, a three-year plan and I suppose the first three to six months of that is doing this research and feeling comfortable about it. Um, uh, is it rocket science? It certainly isn't. Is it sales time and research? Yes, it is. Um, uh, the research uh, element is absolutely vital uh, in moving forward. Um, I suppose just to give you a very quick snapshot, um, uh, your market is the mainstream gift and home accessories market. Um, it's similar to Ireland, except it's much bigger and much more competitive. Uh, to, give you, to give you an idea, um, uh, in Ireland, there's kind of you know, 15, 20 very good retailers that we would know off the tops of our heads that, 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 that all of us, or the majority of you probably sell to um, or would like to sell to. And I suppose um, uh, in the States, um, depending on your sector, there's about three to 400 of those very good uh, retailers. Um, uh, some of those are multiples, which I'll come to, but a lot of them are strong independents or family-owned business who might have only one door or they might have six or eight doors. Uh, so I'm gonna run you through those. Um, I suppose, you know, the key to know, the key to move forward on the research uh, uh, is customer face time and cultivating those relationships. Um, uh, that takes a long time. It's, it, you know, I, I moved to the States in, in, in 1998 uh, uh, and started this process and, and it's, it constantly evolves, but you make great relationships and, and um, it's, it's, it's a great way of doing business actually, a very, a very warm industry. Um, it does take travel time, 
Um, but there is great adventure and great experience in that process. Um, so just, just to, to bring you to the, the, the obvious one is, is where do you start? You know, you're at your desk in Ireland. Um, what happens next? Um, what, what do you do? Um, I always say to people, buy a wall map of America. A laminated copy, um, they're very easily accessible. They're kind of 20 euro. Uh, uh, just buy a big map of the States. Um, and, and it's a start because it great, gives you a great geographical perspective. Um, the US is, is broken down obviously into 50 states, but with, it's also broken down into geographical territories that are named for commercial reasons. So for example, you have the Northeast, which is kind of you know, Boston and, and the, the six states surrounding that, some of which you'll know like Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island. Um, you then have the Mid-Atlantic, uh, you have territories like the Southeast, which is all those ones around Atlanta, um, uh, I've always liked the one Tola, which is Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, and Arkansas. So you've got all these territories around the states. Um, my suggestion would be to, 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 you know, don't go down the route of trying to, to, you know, get every store and research every store across the country. Is maybe pick two to three territories to begin with. And the obvious ones there are probably the Northeast, the Mid-Atlantic, um, uh, and the southeast. Um, uh, they're on the eastern seaboard, so in terms of travel, it's slightly less. It's also less expensive to get to fly to that part. Um, uh, now, that doesn't mean ignore the other ones because there's huge opportunities across them. But but it's it's a very uh, it's a very densely part of of America, the eastern seaboard, and there's also a lot of money on, in that part of the states. Um, I suppose you know going going to the next step is then uh, who's your competition? That's the, 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 the biggest part of it. That's, that's kind of, once you've got the map, once you've picked your territory, um, the most important thing is, is find out who your competitors are in the States. Um, uh, uh, you know, whether you're making candles or tabletop or, or textiles, um, you go to their site. Um, uh, uh, and what I'd love to do is I'd love to, I'd love to walk you through um, that process, because um, that, that builds an independent uh, uh, customer list for you. So I'm just going to switch screens here. And, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, um, uh, I'm gonna take a, a tabletop company I know called Juliska. Um, Juliska is, is, is a very uh, well-known company in our industry in the States. And they sell uh, 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 tabletops, so they do ceramics, they do glass, they do lighting, they do jewelry, they do linens. Um, a very successful company uh, in our sector in the US. Um, so I'm just going to take that as, 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 as the example. Now, obviously, you might be selling textiles. As I say, you could be selling jewelry, you could be selling uh, cards, anything. But if you take your, your specific sector, like I say with Juliska, um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's quite brilliant how you can find out uh, 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 everything about those, that, that company. So you see here, I'm flicking through it, it's really well presented. They've got, you know, great updates. Um, but for me, the most important thing on that site, and, and also a nice little video there, is if you scroll down to the bottom of the most of these home pages, you'll find in this area here, you'll find, find a retailer near you. Uh, sometimes they call that um, store locator. So what you do is you click on there. Um, and again, the majority of major uh, companies in the States have got this data. So I did this earlier uh, uh, today. Um, and basically what you do is you can put in a zip code. So if you put in like 10010, Okay, and you press search, uh, that's, that's a zip code around New York. It will give you all of their stores in that location. Okay, so what you do then is look, they're all right here. They've got the addresses, um, it's got independent stores like Little House Shop, Imperial China, Hoaglands of Greenwich. It's also got multiples, uh, which I'll come to in a minute. So look at all of these guys. So this is, this is right here, that's uh, 12, 16, that's 20 stores. Um, close to the New York area within a kind of hour or two drive. So what, so what I do then is, you know, you, you, and I'm going to just flip back to, um, 
uh, sorry, just excuse me, I'm gonna flip back to my presentation, is what you do is, you know, you build your customer target list there, um, uh, and you can, you, can, you can attain a huge amount of information from that in a very short space of time. So let's, let's take an example, okay? Let's take an example of the little house shop, okay? So you go back to Google and you go to the little house shop in Wayne, Pennsylvania, okay? So this is their website, really nice independent store. I actually sell to them at the moment and a couple of the lines that I represent, okay? Uh, uh, it's not a particularly comprehensive site, and they do set online, but they've got some lovely uh, internal photos. Um, uh, I don't remember the name of that doggy, but uh, look, there you go. There's Juliska, which is one of the lines I was just discussing. So let's go down to China and dinnerware. And right there, they've got all the competitors. So you've got all these different competitors uh, 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 across, across the board. So that gives you a very good idea, okay, of what's selling in that store, okay? Additionally, what you can do is you go back to the Google search and you press images. And suddenly you're getting, you're beginning to build a picture of what this store is like. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a super nice store, actually. It's in a very wealthy area outside Philadelphia called Wayne, Pennsylvania. Uh, you're getting an idea of the front of the store. The merchandising is really well done. Um, uh, actually, this is some of the staff members. This is the owner, actually, this lady here, um, Nicole. Uh, uh, so it's, it's you know, you're, you're getting a good sense of that store. You're also getting there, you know, as I say, you're getting a very good idea of other products that they're selling in the store that could be your competitor as well. So you're really getting an in-depth knowledge of, of, of that store and, and who's in there. And then you can also, you know, do a little bit more research and go into the idea of, of you know, how much is uh, some of those other lines that they're selling, like berry and thread? Uh, you know, what, what are the price points? So, you know, it's 40 bucks for a pasta bowl. So it's, it's high end. Um, you know, they do a, a broad spectrum of product in that store, but it is, it is quite a high end. Uh, um, so that gives you, um, I think that gives you a very good idea. And you can do that across the board. Um, uh, I'm just gonna go back to, to, to the Juliska site and show you just go back and you know we can pick if we can pick another one i mean there, there, there's some really they've, they've actually juliska have got a very good uh, uh store network in the us um uh so put back in that zip code um, and do a search you know another one i sell to is um i saw their gracious home which is on the upper east side in new york really beautiful store um very strong online um, uh, hold on, graciousome.com. So for example, uh, and I hope you can all still see my screen. Uh, again, very uh, well-known store. You can, you, can, you can click along here, decor, tabletop. Um, uh, you can even search by company. Um, they obviously have Vietri, Italia, Loger, all these really well-known um, international tabletop brands. Um, you know, they've got, you can do table linens, you can do decor. So, you know, there's, there's decorative pillows, there's throws, um, uh, which I, I sell quite a lot of in the States. Um, so I suppose it, it's very easy to build your customer um, list in that, in that way. I'm just gonna flip back to the presentation. So in a very short space of time, you can work out if that independent retailer is a fit for your product category. And as I say, you can research their suppliers. Now, uh, you're all asking, or I'm not sure if you're all asking, but uh, it's, it's one of the things is, who's the buyer and how do I get their information? So you've done your store website information. You know, the other way you've got to do it is you've just got to phone them up. Um, you can sometimes find that through web search. You can just Google buyer the little house shop and it might pop up that, that Nicole is the buyer there. Um, the other idea is you phone them and, and you ring them and you, you call, you say, look, I'm, I'm phoning from a, a ceramics company in Ireland. Um, uh, and you know what? When most people hear you say you're phoning from Ireland, they give you, a, they give you, they give you the benefit of the doubt. They, they'll listen to you. You might get, oh God, I was on holiday there. Where are you from? 
And suddenly you've got the, the conversation piece and then they're much more likely to give you the information you want. Uh, so I suppose, you know, you need to get the email address and say, look, I'm, I'm, I, I, my, my plan is to come to the States uh, in, in a couple of months and I'm just doing some research on some uh, independent stores and I came across yours and it looks lovely, you know, the usual. Um, so, and, and the other thing is then a lot of these people will know really good stores in, 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 in the States. It's just like, you know, if you start talking to a buyer in Dublin or Kilkenny, they'll go, oh, well, there's a beautiful store in Galway, you know, they, and they all know each other. I mean, it's a huge country, but they're, they're, it's, it's actually a very, our industry is quite small and, and quite insular insofar as uh, um, a lot of the independent stores would, would know of each other. Um, so so that's, that's just in terms of acquiring buyer data, um, uh, the, the little, little tricks around it. Um, the next one, I suppose, having built that, that independence list, and what I would suggest, I'll come back to the actual numbers on that in a minute. Um, the other element of it is the multiples. Now, it's, it, it's a tricky one. They're, 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 you know, there's some amazing, amazing multiples. I mean, we've got lovely multiples in Ireland, like Brown Thomas, where there's two or three locations, and obviously Evoca and, and, and you know, um, uh, Meadows and Burn or whatever. Uh, in the States, the likes of Bloomingdale's, who have 60 doors, um, Nordstrom have 80. Dillard's have 300 locations. Um, uh, Anthropology have 380 locations, and they have 12 superstores, as they call them, which are, which are much, much, much larger locations. Um, you know, depending on what sector you're in as well. Obviously, Whole Foods. I mean, and I'm, I've just put, you know, I've just put five names there that came to the top of my head. So you're thinking, how in God's name do I find either the divisional buyer, the actual buyer, or the assistant buyer? And it's exactly the same way as, as we just spoke about. So again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch to, uh, to, to the other screen. And if you put in something like uh, Bloomingdale's, OK? So I'm going to pick again. I'm going to take that model of, uh, 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 you know, I know you're not shipping to Ireland. If you take that model of, you know, this is all the various areas. So if you, if you take home, OK? And let's say you go into dinnerware like we did. So let's stick to tabletop as the, as the chosen category. So you click on that. Here they are, all your competitors, Villaroy and Bach, Vietri, there's Juliska again that we saw a few minutes ago. Um, uh, uh, Vista Alegre, they're out of Portugal. Lennox, a lot of you may have heard of, it's a massive American company. Kate Spade's dinnerware range. Um, they're all right there. So you're thinking, okay, how in God's name do I find a buyer for that? Um, but actually, uh, amazingly, a lot of that is very available. So if you go into um, Bloomingdale's, hold on a sec, Bloomingdale's tabletop buyer, okay? You can go LinkedIn. A lot of them pop up. Denise Myra, okay? So her LinkedIn profile is there. Okay, and there's a few others down there from other multiples you'll see. So interestingly, you click into her profile and it should pull up now. Uh, I did this the other day. It gives you, you know, obviously in LinkedIn, it gives you everybody's career. So Denise has been there for a long time. So she, it might not necessarily be the actual tabletop buyer, but she's certainly going to know who it is uh, and again, you can navigate this by, by finding out more, by, by putting it in, uh, uh, you know, you could put um, crystal buyer, or you could put um, dinnerware buyer. There's different options of putting it in. But you see here, okay, that her name, uh, Denise Meyer. So you're like, well, hold on, how do I get her email? And interestingly, and this is, a, I love this little tip. You put, um, uh, you put in uh, Bloomingdale's, excuse me, never good at the typing, email format, okay? And amazingly, good old Google, 
it gives you the Bloomingdale's email format, okay? So, so then you go, sorry, I'll just go, excuse me, hold on a sec, this one's the best one. I clicked on this the other day. So this gives you the format of how that, their buyers is, is, is shown. Uh, so for example, it's, it's jane.doe at bloomingdales.com. So if you go back and you put denise.myro at bloomingdales.com, you've got the buyer and you've got their email. Okay. It's, it's the same. It's very much the same with Nordstrom. I'll do another location for you. Nordstrom.com. Okay. So you go to Nordstrom, you go back in uh, uh, at brands, or we can go to home, uh, home and gifts, uh, go back into tabletop. Um, uh, and again, that will let's do drinkware and glassware. Uh, it's tabletop and kitchen. Um, and it, it brings up all of that data for you. Um, again, if you, if you go in and you do Nordstrom, regional buyers or tabletop buyer, okay? How to get an appointment with a Nordstrom. There's actually Leaf TV. I don't know if you've heard of Leaf TV. It's an online um, uh, 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 motion picture um, site. Uh, and it, it, it shows you actually how to get an appointment. They actually do a little video. I'm, I'm not going to run through that now. But it gives you an idea of how you get a hold of them. You can also then um, look. So Jennifer Walker, for example, is the buyer for women's luxury uh, apparel. Um, and again, if, if, you know, here's actually how to find emails or contacts for buyers for major retail stores. It's all right there. So um, I think it's, 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 it's relatively easy to find that. Um, and just going back to the presentation, uh, you, you have now, you have your, their email address and their phone number via LinkedIn and the email format I showed you there. Um, it's a long process, I can tell you that. Um, you know, it, it usually takes six months to a year to, to adhere to seasonal buying practices for such a, for, for large companies, you know. So for example, if you're selling textiles, you know, they, they, they tend to bring product in in, in, in September or October, um, or maybe, maybe even the end of August. So if you're doing tabletop, you've obviously got bridal season and then you've got your, your, your quarter four uh, uh, strong sales. So the buyers are thinking, you know, sort of six months to a year ahead. So for example, if you're selling textiles, they are researching what's available to them in January, February, or March. And then, you know, they pick their items, they give you enough time to make that stock and you ship it in August or September. So it is quite a long process. And obviously you've got to get into that slipstream. You've got to catch their attention. And, and I suppose, you know, how, how, do, you, how do you do that? Um, uh, you know, you've, 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 you've got your completed list now, um, you're highlighting on your map in the office as to where the locations are. You've got your 20 to 40 potential independents, for example, in New England. Um, now, obviously, that can vary. If you're selling, you know, cards or, 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 or stationery or, or beauty products, there may be a lot more locations. Um, I know, for example, for Tabletop and Crystal, um, in the high-end sector, there's about you know, there's about 40 per, per territory. And I don't forget, there's, you know, there's, there's probably 12 or 14 different territories in the state. So that, that adds up very quickly. Um, I suppose then you, you've got your completed list. Um, you're, you're trying to catch the attention of the, of the, of the big guys um, and, and the multiples. And, and I suppose that, that process is, you know, and I, I'm gonna speak about that next week on Wednesday, um, at three o'clock is, is how you catch the attention of these buyers, particularly the big guys, uh, and not overload them, uh, and, and how you have your, your, your digital formats, your presentation via paper, um, your succinct US dollar pricing, your online digital footprint. Um, uh, you know, and once you've caught the attention of that buyer via email, then you could potentially have a Zoom meeting or when things lift, you can start traveling back to the States. Um, uh, you know, interestingly, um, uh, I started to sell to a chain of stores um, out of Seattle about four years ago. I didn't meet the buyers 
for another two years after that. Um, uh, they actually, I, I, I tried, I mean, I said, look, I, I'd love to come and see you. And they said, don't worry, it's okay. So some of this can actually be done via email and presentations if you've got a strong digital footprint, succinct US dollar pricing. So if you've done the research, you can then get to that point with them, particularly if you're a well-known brand um, uh, you know, within Ireland, uh, you'd be surprised. I mean, you know, years ago, you had to do the trade shows. And, I, and I, again, I can come to that next week. I think it's important to, to, to do some trade shows. But now these buyers can find out so much about your company in the space of 10 or 15 minutes. Um, uh, so, so I think it's really important that, that you, you have that footprint laid out because that gives them a comfort zone. And then they'll go, okay, I, I want to start interacting with these guys. I'm actually chasing one of the major multiples in the States at the moment. And uh, uh, I've been in contact with them since last November. And I offered to come and see them in January and February. And they were like, no, don't worry. Look, we're still very interested. And now obviously then March came and the restrictions. But I've been interacting with them since then. And, 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 and I've sent them a sample pack. And the funny thing is that point of a sample pack suddenly becomes this micro trade show. You know, so you don't have to go and spend, you know, thousands of dollars uh, uh, necessarily. Um, and I know that's all changing and, and evolving as to, you know, our travel habits uh, uh, and as to how that's going to pan out, nobody knows. But I suppose it's very important to have that course of events. And, and I'll, speak, I'll speak more about that next week. Um, so, I, 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 look, I suppose that's half an hour. Um, I feel maybe I rushed through some of it, but I'd love to field any questions you have. I know... Um, uh, Emer and Mary said, look, you know, half an hour is probably uh, uh, enough to talk about. But I think that the two things that I would love to, 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 to come away with it is to build that multiples list and to build that independence list. And, and that's how you start. Um, and then start reaching out to them. And you know what? It's funny, you know, the American buyers, they really, really want something new and different. And we have that out of Ireland. Um, you know, Ireland is, is now regarded as, as a design center. You know, there's some very, very strong mainstream product coming out of this country. And I suppose they are aware of that. Um, uh, and they know that, 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 that it's easy shipping, the logistics is easy. So, you know, I, I always say to people, you're kind of, oh my God, how, you know, how, how will I catch the attention of the buyer? These guys are looking for really, really well prepared and really, really well made product with a great story because that's that's what they need. Um, so look, uh, uh, thanks for listening. Um, very happy to field a few questions um, uh, uh, and go from there. Marcus, thank you very much. That was a, a, a whistle stop and very informative introduction uh, to everyone. And you know, as we all know, it's it's a huge market, but you've made it. Um, very clear and more accessible than maybe a lot of us would have thought. You mentioned in um, your dialogue that um, trade fairs could become part of the mix. Have you any ideal equation of how many trade fairs versus the, the, the digital interaction to start off with? I mean, I don't want to pin you to an exact, but could you give us some indication? Yeah, that? absolutely. I mean, when I started selling in the States, um, uh, you know, there was all these regional shows and you used to, tra in, in January and July, you would traps around from New York to Atlanta, to Dallas, to Los Angeles and Seattle and Chicago. And, and, and they had all these trade shows. Now that's been very consolidated into the New York gift show, the Atlanta gift show. And there's actually a new one in Vegas. Um, I would pick one, uh, definitely. And there's a couple of small offshoots of those as well. Um, I mean, I, 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 I've done the New York show for 20 years um, and uh, it's a really good show. It's relatively easy to get to. Um, uh, it's on the Eastern Seaboard. Um, uh, so I suppose, yeah, I would pick one. Um, and my primary one would be the New York show. There is an offshoot of that, which is, which is actually a competitor called Shop Object which was set up last uh, two years ago. 
which, which is making very good traction. I've heard really good things about it. Unfortunately, I haven't walked it because it's always on at the same time as the New York show. So I never have the opportunity to go um, across Manhattan. It's, it's, it's on, the, on the east side of Manhattan as opposed to in the Javits Center. But yeah, I, I suppose either New York or Atlanta. But I think, I think New York is, um, is probably the stronger one. And nearly all the big guys go to New York. Um, so, so that would be my, my lead uh, uh, indicator there for our sector. Okay, and my colleague, my colleague Nicola would be working uh, with you with regard to, to that market. So if anybody has any um, in-depth questions, they can refer to both yourself and Nicola. I have a volume question, does volume matter? In what context? By volume, by production, production volume. Is it yes, it's a big thing. It's, it's right. you know, um, uh, you've, got, you've got to be lined up um, to have stock. Now, look, you can go and do the New York show or you can go and do a sales trip in January or February. Um, uh, American buyers understand that you, uh, you, know, you need time to make that product. Um, you know, a lot of the buyers at that time of year are looking for either spring or fall ship date so it gives you an idea and, and, and a lead time to make that stock um, so uh, you know you, you need to line the ducks up well for that um, and and I suppose look volume is anything if, if you're <laughs> with the big guys with the big multiples if, if you if you want to approach them you obviously do need to have serious um, uh, capacity in terms of production and look you know there's a lot of work with those guys. There's a lot of logistics. They force back a lot of the responsibility of, 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 of you know, um, it's called EDI, the electronic data system, which again, I can help with. Um, I've had experience of that. Um, the other option is there's some really tidy kind of eight, 10, 12 door location stores around the States. Um, you know, they, it's not all the kind of big, huge, you know, 80, 120, 300 locations. I mean, Macy's have 1,100 doors. Um, I actually don't sell to them, but, um, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's some really nice stores around that have 10 or 12 locations. And those ones are quite easy to deal with. Um, uh, uh, you know, there's a beautiful, I deal with a really nice interiors, tabletop and bedding company out of Washington DC called the Kellogg um, Company. And they have five locations, really easy, really easy going buyer. Um, uh, she's super shrewd, but you know, the, there's, there's those options as well. Um, uh, if, if you're worried about production um, and, and volume, you know, start with those, with the independence and with those type of locations. Uh, and then you'll get a comfort zone to approach the bigger guys. Um, after that. Okay, thank you very much. It was just as I was asking you about volume there and, and you were saying that there is a pathway for niche, a question actually popped in about it. So I, I think you, you've, you've answered the process for uh, niche um, in limited line, you, so there's short production lines. Um, so that, that's, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. I've got a question in here about the cost of taking a stand at one of these fairs. <laughs> it's a great question. Oh my God, it's, it's, it's not cheap. Um, a, a 10 by 10, 10 foot by 10 foot, but so like a, a, a three meter by three meter in, in the kind of showcase world for want of a better comparison. Um, in the New York show, uh, I get a hard wall booth. So they build the, the, the frame for you. You can, you, can, you can just rent the space, like the actual footprint, but then you've got to build the stand. So I get the hard wall. They're about 7,000 US for that space for the show. Um, uh, and that's, that's not including your shipping, your, your, your drayage, which is obviously getting it from uh, uh, your arrival location in the States to your stand. Um, and there's various ways around that that I can help out with. But the... Um, uh, you're talking 7,000 for that space, um, and that's before flights and, and whatever. So uh, I know the Vegas location is a little bit less expensive. I think it's around five. Um, so you want to have done your research uh, for that. And, um, uh, you know, they, yeah, look, it's, 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 it can be expensive. It, it, it tends to work out by the time you've shipped your product over, it tends to work out at about 10,000 
US to do a show between flights, product shipping, hotels. Um, uh, uh, I, I have a brother who lives in New York, um, uh, so it helps with the old billing. And if you've got cousins or old friends, you can always tap them up to avoid exorbitant uh, uh, Manhattan hotel prices. Um, so, so look, it's, it's, it's expensive, but the rewards can be very good. Okay. There's someone that's asked that question. It's just stressing through, which is really good uh, advice. And I would be an advocate of this as well, is that it's very important to visit the show and research it first. I mean, we would have instances where um, our clients are offered stands at, at cut rates. I'm not necessarily saying in, in the US, all over. And it can be very tempting, but if you haven't researched the show, um, I, I don't think there's any point. Would you like to talk about that, Marcus? Yeah, it's a, listen, and thank you for that person for pointing that out. It is the, the, the you know, you doing a sales trip and then going to the New York show um, uh, afterwards it, it, is a really good idea and walking that show, seeing where you would like that stand or your, your own stand. You know yourself, you get a great perspective as to the high traffic area during the show. You know, you then, when, when they send you the PDF of, of the map, you're not lost, you know, you do, you, you've got a much better idea. So 100% and it's a lot less expensive um, uh, to walk that show um, uh, than exhibit at it uh, and do the research. So no, it's a really, really good idea, um, is try and tag it on to a sales trip. Um, actually this year, this February, I didn't do the New York show and, and I went the week before uh, and I contacted a lot of customers and I said, listen, I'm, I'm coming over the week before. And then I just walked the show the day before I came back to Ireland and, uh, you know, just to see what was going on. So it's, 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 you know, stores are happy to see you before a show as well. So no, good call. Uh, absolutely. And uh, uh, I would, I would highly advise it. We're getting a lot of thank yous, which is, is, is really nice. People are finding it really informative and very clear and good information. And I have a person here who had attended uh, a Meet the US Buyer event last autumn, and it was organized by Cork Leo. They learned a lot about landed prices, et cetera. Would you suggest speaking initially with independents who sell mainly Irish products and, be, and risk being mixed in with the shamrocks, et cetera, or avoid these shops altogether? So I think that's someone asking, should you, they look at the mom and pop shops initially? And then move is on. that within the, within the ethnic Irish stores? Well, what 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 this person is saying is okay. They they had a they had met, went to the Meet the US buyer last autumn. It was very informative. They learned a lot about landing prices. Would you suggest speaking initially with the independents who sell mainly Irish products and risk being mixed in with shamrocks, etc., or avoid these shops altogether? Uh, no, I, I, my answer to that is absolutely sell. Uh, uh, the, the, some of those um, Irish stores in the States are really, really good retailers. I mean, they are, they are, uh, they've got very successful businesses. Um, I would, uh, and again, there is a show that services that, which probably a lot of you know, which is in Secaucus, um, which is, which is organized by a couple of manufacturers. It's for the last, I don't know, 25, 30 years, I don't know how long um, the guys have been at it, but know that so some of those stores, I mean, I sell, I sell to about 120 independent mainstream US stores. I sell to about 15 of the ethnic Irish stores uh, uh, and, and, and they're, they're really good retailers. Um, so look, it boils down to, is it a, is it a product mix that you like? Uh, it, it, within their store. It's just go and do the research, just like we did with the little house shop. See what they're selling in their store, see the images within their store, uh, and then you can pick and choose. Uh, you will run across a situation where there might be an ethnic Irish store in the same town as the, the mainstream gift store. So there could be an exclusivity issue there, unlikely, um, uh, and something, to, some, a, a good thing to worry about if you, if you can sell to both of them. But uh, no, I, I, the, the interesting thing is, and a lot of those stores would go to Showcase Ireland, um, uh, you know, go to Showcase in January, and um, 
I would, uh, it, you know, people have used that as a launch pad in the past. They, they've, because it's relatively inexpensive to service those ethnic stores in the States and the good ones, it can bring in revenue that can subsidize, you know, your shows to do the New York gift show or to or subsidize um, a, a sales trip. Um, uh, you know, and, and again, that's something I can get into more detail about next week, uh, uh, next Wednesday. Um, I, I, you know, I, I walk everybody through that, that you know, from, from leaving Ireland to coming back to Ireland, either on a sales trip or on a, on a trade show. So in answer to your question, sell to them absolutely, because there are some, there's some really good Irish stores out there. Okay, Marcus, what, um, uh, as a rule of thumb, what level of sales would um, a craft um, business expect to attain as success, you know, what would be considered a successful figure for sales at a show? At a trade show or? or, yes, or? at a trade show. It's a good question. Um, uh, I suppose, you know, it costs $10,000. I always look to, to have revenue of 25,000, 20, 25,000, anything above that is great. Um, you know, it, it's tough if you go the whole way to the States, exhibit, you know, you, 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 the costing of, of 10,000. Now, just to point out, the current US Advantage program, which I'm helping some companies with, uh, uh, you get a very um, strong subsidy from the Design Council. So, so just keep that in the back of, of your mind, the makers, that there's, there's very, very uh, uh, advantageous subsidies which help out on that costing on a 50-50 basis. But you need to speak to Nicola um, uh, and, and Emer about that more. Um, but I suppose, you know, you've gone to the States, you spent all that time and energy. You know, I've come out of shows with, with, with you know, twelve or $15,000 worth of sales. But then there's the follow-up. Um, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm, I've met Bloomingdale's buyers at those shows. Um, I've met actually the Kellogg company. I met them at the New York gift show. Um, uh, the gracious home buyers are always there. Um, uh, so, so, you know, you don't always get an order from those guys. It, you know, it's a bit like meeting the Brand Thomas buyers or the Avoca buyers. They don't write the orders on the stand at the show. They, you know, you, you've, got to, you've got to go back to them afterwards. And so it's quite difficult to quantify that. Um, uh, I have a very strong, uh, there's, a, there's a chain of outdoor shops in America called Orvis, O-R-V-I-S. And Orvis um, uh, have got 71 locations um, and a very strong online business. And I met them at the New York gift show. You know, I, I'd, I'd never have, never have come across them otherwise. So it's in terms of actual writing of the show, I would always hope to write 20, 25 grand. Uh, anything less, you want some pretty good leads to justify it. Um, but you've also got to have staying power. You can't go once, be disappointed. You've got to go two, three or four times. Um, and you've got to talk to your, 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 your neighbors at the show. You've got to get leads from them. You've got a, uh, I know one of the makers recently went to the New York show and didn't have a great writing show, but oh my God, the leads and you've got to sell to this store. This is the buyer's name. This is the buyer's email. You know, you just, you've got to absorb all that data because it's, it's you know, it's around you. Um, it's just showcase on a bigger scale, <laughs> you know? Okay, and, and the rule of thumb would, would be the same. I mean, I would be saying to people, say with something like showcase, that they really need to be there three years to get traction. A, 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 absolutely. I mean, there's no, there's no question. Those big buyers, you know, the, 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 the independent will buy from you and they'll spend, I don't know, 1,500, three grand on an opening order, maybe a bit less, maybe a bit more. And then, you know, you go back and you do a few more shows. And, you know, the, the majors, the big buyers, they walk those aisles and they, they'll remember. I mean, you think about the buyers in Ireland who go up and down the aisles at Showcase. They, they, they see the new guys and then they see them again. And then they're like, you know what? These guys have been around for a while. This is, you know, it's, it's a comfort factor. You know, it's like, the, it's like the restaurant that's been open for a couple of years and there's always a queue outside. If you've got a busy booth at New York, um, uh, uh, you're going to get noticed. Um, and you just, 
you're, you're also, you're absorbing the industry. You're, you're, you're there learning all the time about new contacts. So I think it's important to, to, for that factor as well, because I've seen, I've seen Irish companies go and have been, been really the head down going back to Ireland. And I think with, with, with low sales, but that's not necessarily, um, uh, you know, you've, you've got to stick at it. Um, and I know that's easy, easy to say now, but you, you really do. You've got, you've got to stick at it uh, uh, in order to make it a success. You can get really lucky. You can get really lucky at the first show, have a great show, meet a big buyer. Um, but again, that's, that's, that's luck. It, it takes a, a few years to, to gain that um, continuous traction. Uh, I, I've often said to people, try and get 25 new doors in year one. It's not that difficult to find 25 new stores. And if you get people who are writing, you know, a thousand to five thousand dollars, you suddenly got a hundred grand. It's 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 and that's what I've said to Nicola. And, and again, this is I'm sort of I'm, I'm I'm spilling into next week's presentation, but it's not that difficult. Uh, uh, the the difficulty is making the effort to get over there um, uh, and do the and do the re, do the research at home and then the sales trip. Um, uh, it's to take that leap of faith, as it were. And then say to yourself that I'm going to be in this for the next three years, and just mm -hmm. make, make that make that commitment. That's really uh, beneficial, Marcus. I have one here. It's a person who works in handmade soap and shaving products. Um, do you think that that uh, market is saturated um, in the U.S. Uh, with with Irish products such, such as theirs? Absolutely so not. Um, uh, and in fact, that sector. Of, of care and and hand care and and uh, um, you know particularly sanitizers you know hand sanitizer packs and, and 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 you know hand creams is is on the is on a very strong upward trajectory it was on a strong trajectory before uh, current the current pandemic but it's even more so now uh, so there, I think that that's a very strong opening um, uh, uh, and, and is certainly a product. Uh, and you know, again, it's coming from Ireland. We have a, a you know, we have the, the sort of Ireland brand is is clean and 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 you know, country and, and wild Atlantic way and and all that 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 you know, you know, fresh living and and I, I no, I I think on the contrary, I think there's I think there's very strong opportunity in that sector. Um, That's great. That's really, really comprehensive. Listen, would you be happy enough, say if, if anyone had a question following on from today that can be answered next week, that they would email them in to us? And if I fed them with Mary, fed them on to you, uh, would that be, be useful? Absolutely. I'm happy to answer any questions. It's no problem okay. at all. Because I mean, and then we can, we can deal with them, if not in the presentation next week, after the presentation next week. Would that be... Possibly. No problem. No, no, I'd be delighted to. Absolutely. And you're happy enough that we send on today's presentation uh, to everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I can, uh, Emer, I can, I think I sent you the presentation in a PDF earlier. So thank you so much. Um, we're really appreciative that you made uh, Friday afternoon so upbeat. And, uh, yeah, it's Friday. Um, yeah, I'm a bit envious that I'm not locked into the west of Ireland or even the northwest of Ireland at the moment but we're all really appreciative i'd like to thank you i'd like to Not thank all. mary dunn for her her support and management today and all of our audience so thank you very much marcus and we'll see you next week thank you all right all the best have a good weekend Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.